Right now, we do want to go live to Ukraine in Kyiv, and you see him right there. Fox News correspondent Trey Yankst on the ground. He joins us now live. It's just after 5 a.m. Uh, Trey, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Uh, sort of paint a picture of what has transpired on the ground in the last 24 hours. Alex Marla. Good afternoon. What we've seen over the past 24 hours is really a major Russian invasion into Ukraine. And even over the past hour, we continue to see escalation here on the ground. There were two large explosions in the capital of Kyiv. Initial reports indicate, according to an advisor to the interior minister here, that a Russian aircraft was shot down. This is a, a big indicator that Ukrainian air defense systems may still be working, despite claims by the Russian military that they took them out in the early stages of this operation. What happened, though, was there was a, a military incursion into this country, and it came from a lot of different directions. In the south, from an area of land called Crimea that Russia annexed back in 2014, and also from Russian territory and from territory in Belarus. So this was a multi-pronged approach that included a ground operation and also an air campaign targeting major cities. Uh, Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, uh, Kharkiv, the second largest Ukrainian city, and there were even sirens blaring in the western city of Lviv. So this was an attack that targeted all of Ukraine, and it sent many people fleeing for the Polish border, others underground this evening because they are concerned about further air operations taking place by the Russian military. But the major concern tonight and into tomorrow has to do with the ability of the Russians to surround the Ukrainian capital. Western intelligence officials believe that is the goal of Russian President Putin, and if he is successful, he will likely try to overthrow the government here, and we could see an entirely different battlefield that includes urban warfare and almost a guerrilla type warfare taking place here in the Ukrainian capital as the Ukrainians try to push back against this Russian offensive. Back to you. Uh, Trey, your, your reporting really has been remarkable. I, I think you've stood out among everybody doing great work for the network. I think you have had the most uh, sort of extraordinary reporting. Just a as a guy, What's it like being in that city right now? What's it feel like? Uh, what's the energy like? What's it like standing there and hearing explosions? Look, we've been in a lot of war zones, everything from Afghanistan to Iraq to Lebanon to Gaza. And there are a lot of similarities in terms of the pressure that you face in terms of covering these stories. And there are a lot of differences. And the major difference in this story has to do with the weaponry being used. Oftentimes when we're covering stories in a place like Gaza, you're dealing with rockets that are being fired over the border and intercepted by Israel's missile defense system, for example. Here we're talking about cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, fighter jets that are targeting uh, different Ukrainian convoys. And the death toll in this uh, event could rise really quite high. And so it's a different type of conflict, but in terms of the feeling, uh, my team and I cover these stories all around the world, and we're simply prepared. A lot of preparation goes into this, and we are ready for whatever happens in the coming days. Do you have any sense of, Trey, how the Ukrainian people feel thus far about the U.S. response? The Ukrainian people are the real story here, and they are looking for any sort of support they can get. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, just before, hours before this offensive got started, pleaded with the international community, but more specifically with the Russian people, to try to put pressure on their leader, Vladimir Putin, to call off this offensive. As for the Ukrainian people and the assistance that they received from the Americans, people are quite thankful for the weaponry, the things like anti-tank missiles, those Javelin missiles that we know Ukrainian forces even today have used against those Russian brigades that crossed over the border. But they're also looking for more. They are looking for more weapons, but they're looking for more sanctions as well. They understand that this is a pivotal moment for the future of Ukraine. The the future of this country lies in the hands of the international community and the ability of the international community to deter Russian President Putin's behavior and also support those Ukrainian forces as they try to push back against this Russian invasion.
Well, Trey Yanks, uh, we, we wish you and your crew to stay safe. We know you take so many different precautions to do that. Um, but thank you for bringing us the important uh, stories that you are bringing us from there in Kiev. And please send along uh, our love and support from Southern California for all the brave civilians that are there as well tonight. Trey Yanks, thank you so much for coming on.